Welcome back, folks. I hope you remembered your flat can and your shock rifle today, because it's time for more Teach Me Unreal Tournament 2004. Today I'll be covering the many weapons that make up Unreal Tournament's expansive arsenal. So I'll just meet you in just a minute, in game. And here we are, folks, on DM one-on-one -on -one e Doma, and this will be the stage for our weapons train today. Now, this is going to be a longer tutorial than the first one we had, so sit back and relax. First thing we're going to talk about is range. There's no units of measurement, so what are we going to use? We're just going to eyeball it. Anything closer than this is close range. Anything further in this fourth line is long range, and anything in between is mid range. You'll want to switch weapons depending on how far your opponent is, or what's the best weapon for the job, and that's what we'll be discussing today. I'll just cut to each weapon and show you what's the best way to use it. See what I mean, folks? We're going to be jumping right into it. Our first weapon here is our shield gun, our constant companion. Its primary fire is the EMP Blast, a very powerful and satisfying attack, but very obvious against skilled opponents. As you can hear, it has a very loud and distinctive noise. The only way you're going to get people with this is by catching them by surprise, by jumping over edges and darting around corners. Otherwise, I advise not using it. In fact, I don't advise using it at all if you can help it. Now, it does have... Well, one other thing about its primary fire before I get going too far. You don't have to release it on your own. If this was an opponent, it would go off on its own. Now, onto its secondary fire, the shield. And this is not infinite, and be aware, whatever you employ, it will give away your position. It's very bright, and very obvious that you're using it. You might use that to your advantage, though. You might bait in opponents, thinking you don't have a real weapon, when you really have a flak in your pocket. Uh, you could also use it to get pa pickups there out in the open, like the Super Shield, and the Redeemer, and the Kega Health, and Plunge. Just be aware that you're giving yourself away. Well, the next tool in our bag of tricks is our assault rifle. Its primary fire is a peppering of bullets. As you can see, it's not exactly accurate at all, even at close range. It's best used for finishing off opponents, otherwise it's pretty useless. Now, its secondary fire is the grenades. These are very powerful. They're deceivingly powerful, actually. They do about 50 damage on contact, and they will explode on contact. They're best used, in my opinion, to just dissuade pursuers. As you saw in Plunge, I was sending them down the little ramps at the beginning, at the spawn points, because I wanted to get a better weapon. That's how I suggest you use it too. But you can get some lucky shots with this, if you're lucky. Now for our third weapon, the Reviled Bio Rifle. Not everyone's favorite, and certainly not mine, but it can be effective. It's usually best used at short range, Although it can go the distance, as you can see here. It's just the projectiles are so slow that you won't be hitting much of anything. Its secondary fire just charges up a whole bunch of goo. This is incredibly powerful, and as you can see, it splashes. You can use that to your advantage to surprise your opponents. It also has some very interesting char characteristics. As you can see, it will drip off the ceiling. Also, when it does that little burst there, it has a little bit of splash damage. As you can see right there, I got hit with it. Also note that you can get hurt with your own goo. But like I said, you want to use this mostly at close range while moving quickly. It's also a great weapon for leaving a bunch of little mines behind you if you're trying to get to a better weapon, or one you prefer more. Here we have the shock rifle, folks. One of my favorite weapons. Mostly because it is very effective, assuming you can aim correctly. These shock beams do 45 damage per hit, and they also inflict a bit of knockback, which will allow you to jug your opponents. Secondary fire is the shock ball. Very slow, but they actually have more knockback than a regular shock beam. Now, one way you can use these to surprise your opponents is by sneaking them around corners. As you can see, they do clip through corners just a little bit, just enough to surprise people. Now, the real area where this shines, though, is this. Piercing a shock ball with a shock beam results in a shock combo. Notice that it takes five ammo every time you use this, so you will deplete your ammo much faster by using these shock combos. But note that they are extremely powerful, and they're de deceivingly large. 
Everything you see there is within the blast radius. I've been hit by those without even thinking I should have been. And I've also hit other people with them when they thought they shouldn't have been. So I, you need to be able to employ these. And not just while standing still. You need to be able to move while doing these. In fact, while you're jumping around, you need to be able to do these. If you can do that, you will be guaranteed success in UT. Still with me, folks? Well, we're about halfway done. This time we have our link gun. Its primary fire is this slower projectile, but rapid firing plasma shot. Best employed at very short range. Just don't go up against black hands. Its secondary fire is this, a twisted beam of plasma. Pretty good if you can't aim very well. But it is weaker than a minigun, so don't think you're going to win that contest. It does have a little more magic to it. In team game modes, this does a lot more. If you aim this into an ally, it'll power up their link gun, making it actually a threat. And this can be daisy chained to, well, however many people you can connect. In some other gaming modes, like Onslaught, it does even more. It'll heal your allies, it'll heal vehicles, and it'll capture nodes. But Onslaught will have its own tutorial, because it is my favorite game mode, and it's also very complex. Sometimes, folks, you just want to unleash a hail of lead, and that's what the minigun's all about. It's effective in close range, up to mid range with its primary fire. I usually use it for finishing off opponents, as you've seen before. I think I've shown you that. Its secondary fire is all an alternative hail of bullets. This one's slower, but more powerful per round, and also more accurate as you can see. It's effective almost up the long distance. But other than that, there's not much to say. It's a very simple and very effective weapon. Alright, it's time for another of my favorites. It's the flat can. The versatile and effective flat can. I call it versatile because you can use it from mid to close range. Its primary fire is the flak spread. As you can see, you gotta be careful. It will come back at you, but usually at close, close range, laying all this flak into somebody isn't enough to kill them if they're a fresh opponent. If they've got a little bit of health, you might have to shoot them again. It's more interesting firing mode is the flak grenade. These are fantastic, and one of my favorite things about it. Because you can use these without exposing yourself. If someone was sitting around the corner, right where that adrenaline capsule is, I could hit them just like this, out leaving cover. You can also pop around like this, which is one way I like to use it. You can also arc them over ramps without exposing yourself. So very interesting, very fun. You can also bounce the flak just around corners just with the primary fire. The rocket launcher is a good weapon for engaging short range opponents. And I'll show you why. These rockets aren't exactly very fast, and they're very easy to avoid. But at close range, just lay a couple of these under your opponent's feet and they'll be dead in no time. And that's how you want to use it. You want to shoot at the floor for the most part, or adjacent walls. Splash damage is really how you use this. Don't aim directly at your opponents, folks. Now, the secondary fire is not too much different. All it does is fire more rockets. Up to three. Now you'll see those went side by side, but you can do something a little different. While you're charging up, if you press the primary fire button, it will cause a different behavior. It'll cause them to spiral around each other. These are good if you want to put them right under an opponent and kill them outright. Now it has one more interesting characteristic. It has mild homing capabilities, but you do have to hold your cursor over an opponent for so long. If this minigun was an opponent and I sat here for three seconds, it would give me a beep and a little icon around the crosshairs. After that, I could fire one missile, two missiles, three missiles, just like this, and it would go. Once you fired, though, you've lost the lock. So one thing you may want to do is once you start homing in, acquiring a lock, go ahead and charge up your rockets. I haven't really shown this off yet, but maybe I will in future gameplay. The lightning gun is your usual high power, slow firing combat apparatus. But they did something that's kind of nice to make it balanced. They leave a nice path of lightning back to the person firing. So know that whenever you fire it, you're giving yourself away. That's why I usually advise, if you hit them once, 
with this, switch to a weapon that has accuracy with quantity. Because once you hit them, they're going to go squirrely as hell. So you might as well make it easy on yourself. It does do more damage if you hit him in the head. Congrats if you can do that in UT, though. It's pretty hard. At least with skilled opponents, because everyone's always moving around, all over the place. Its secondary fire does scope it in. The longer you hold it, the further it goes. You don't want to stay scoped in all the time, of course, because they'll give you tunnel vision. And not being aware of the situation in UT will lead you to being shot in the back. Other than that, there's not much to say about it. It does have one additional effect. It has a little bit of splash damage, being these arcs. They're not a constant thing, but if you're having a hard time hitting somebody, you can aim at the floor near their feet and give them a little surprise. The sniper rifle is the alternative to the lightning gun on many maps, and there's not too much of a difference between it and the lightning gun. As you can see, instead of a nice stream of lightning to give your position away, we have a loud sound and a puff of smoke. Still zooms the same way. One thing you might want to know about it is it actually does less damage than the lightning gun. Unless you get a headshot, it actually does more damage than the lightning gun on headshots, but otherwise it'll do 60 damage compared to the lightning gun 75 on a body shot. One tool in your arsenal that you might not have considered a weapon right away is the translocator. Putting this under someone's feet and using it will cause you the telefragment. It doesn't matter how much life or shields they have, that's an instant kill. Of course, I don't advise doing this in combat with skilled opponents because most likely it'll just get your ass shot or, <laughs> in the worst case, this thing will get damaged and you'll try to let translocate. But if you want to have some fun, that's another way you can do it. Welcome folks to the site of our super weapons training, DM Phobos 2. Now there's two super weapons that you'll see in Deathmatch and the Redeemer is one of them. Its primary fire is a dumb missile, which is unleashes a very large and usually fatal explosion. Its secondary fire is a remote controlled Redeemer. And as useful as this sounds, it usually isn't as good as it could be. Because bots and skilled players will shoot that thing right out of the air. So how should I use it, you're asking? Well, let me show you one way I like to use it. First, we have to get another one. Right now, I'm playing with the Arena Mutator on. That's why everything's Redeemers. So, one way to use it, it's all about point, it's all about line of sight. You can be right next to this thing, but if you have an obstacle in between you and it, it will not affect you. So you can do stuff like this. Think if you had an unwinning opponent right there on top of that platform with you and you switched to the Redeemer. Man, would he be pissed. And you can also shoot it right in the hallways like this. How's that for using the Redeemer, folks? The second of our deathmatch super weapons is this. It's the Ion Painter. As you can see, you can zoom in with it just like the sniper rifle and the lightning gun. Its action is this. Whenever you aim it on a spot that's exposed to the sky, it'll call down the vengeance of the heavens in the form of an attack satellite, that is. And since it's an attack satellite, it has to have clear view of it. Out here it'll be fine, but if it doesn't have clear view of the sky, clear line of sight, it can't see where it, what you're painting, so it won't go off. Now, how do you use this? Well, I use it about the same as I do the, uh, uh, the Redeemer. Where you just want to shoot it around corners. Of course, we can't use it indoors. Which kind of limits its effectiveness. In fact, against bots, it's near, <laughs> near useless. Because they know exactly when you're firing and they'll start running away. But you can just put it around a corner. Move around a corner casually. Be right next to the explosion and be fine. So that's how you do it. And that's all of our weapons for today. There's actually a few more, but you'll only see those in Onslaught. And as I mentioned before, Onslaught will have its own training session. Oh good, you're still here. Thanks for sticking with me through all that educational material, and I hope I may have shown you something you didn't know before. So let's get to our gameplay today, folks. Today we're going to be doing some Team Deathmatch, and we'll be doing that on Takara Force, the elegant and expansive Takara Force, for 8 to 16 players. Don't do one-on-one -on -one there. You won't find the other guy. 
As for our mutators, none of that. We've taken off our head. There won't be redeemers and ion painters everywhere. Bot skill's gonna be godlike, of course. Time limit of 20 minutes. Goal score of 60. Team deathmatch works a little different from regular deathmatch, because now you can lose points by killing your teammates, so try to avoid that. Otherwise, let's just get into it. Play. Okay, well, first thing we want to do, other than a weapon, is actually get over to the super pickups. Ah, oh, shit. Thankfully, he's distracted. I'm gonna go this way. We want to get the super shield, the keg of health, and the double damage for our team. Are you right next to a dead body? Okay. It should be here in four seconds. Okay, that's a buddy. There we are. Whoa, boy. It's very important to get these in team deathmatch. Do not win this. Nope. You'll be my second victim. You'll be my third victim. Hell yeah, multi-kill. Because it gives your team an impressive advantage. When you can just run over them like that. I killed about half of their team right there. Oh boy. That's what happens when you run into three of them, folks. Huh, that was a little premature. Ow. Okay, they're chasing her. Yep, oh shit. I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I was wondering why I wasn't moving. My foot was stuck in one of these holes. Yeah, that's a buddy. I heard something just come back. I don't know what the heck it was. They must have immediately picked it up or something. Cool bean, Siren. Although I don't think you'll be able to keep up. The bots are actually good at finding someone. And they're sticking to them. But I'm really just... Too inventive with my ways of getting around for these bots. What are you doing? Nope. Are you trying to get the keg of hell? It's not here yet. Something just came back. It wasn't the keg. Oh Jesus, the whole team's over here. I didn't see that when I jumped down there. I would have not been so retarded. Please double... There you go. Please double straight for me. Oh god. Well, thankfully he was retarded. Try to get us a shock over here. Actually wanted to see if that shield was back there. Nope. Looks like we're gonna have a visitor. No, it's a friend. I saw that Lincoln ammo coming up. Whoop. Nope, I'm going down. I'm stuck to the tree. I can't even air control right now. Don't you try that shit with me. Surprised I'm not getting hit with more random beams. Ow. I should have not said a damn thing. Aw, oh, you jerks. That's what I get for talking. There we go. Random beams. Okay, one of our enemies has picked up that. Now I'm verifiably screwed. Okay, verifiably screwed. I'm actually all right at the moment. They got him, I was gonna assist, but they got it. They got it under control. There we go. Somehow, he didn't realize I was behind him. Ow, I got one health. 
There she goes. I had one health. Don't get too full of yourself. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> At least I hit him with the flat grenade. Or not the flat grenade, but the assault rifle grenade. Nope, that is mine. You get your own. Aw, oh, damn it. <laughs> also, they just keep showing up. I got somebody in there. Aw, oh, damn it. I wanted whatever that was. I don't know what it was exactly, but I wanted it. Darn it, I got switched around. Well, shit. Yeah, I wasn't gonna win that, no matter what my skill is. Where the fuck you get a... Double kill! Adrenaline! I was wondering where the hell she got the adrenaline from. I'm just gonna wait until I die. There it goes. He should be pretty close to me. Oh, hey. Man, freaking he <laughs> freaking headshot from across the map, probably. Let's see. Whoops. Ow, douche. I'm ring. Berserk. I'm stuck. Okay, that was helpful. I see you over there. I'm coming for you. Oh, nice shot. Bots are amazing at leading off these rockets. It's a pretty close one. Oh man, I'm surprised I got that one. Nicely done, folks. Red team is the winner! And we even had a scab on our team, Torch. I'm looking at you. What the hell were you doing out there? Just. Were you dancing? It's not what we meant when we said get down. Well, that was a pretty good match, folks. One thing I wanted to point out before we move on is I told you you could lose points by killing your teammates. And this is true, but by default, you cannot hurt them. So you have to go into advanced options and change this friendly fire scale to be something over zero. Anyway, let's move on to our Q&A section. We have another question here from Revocane. He asks, you obviously prefer UT over Quake. What are your experiences with Quake? Well, in all honesty, Rev, before you asked your question, I had not played a single match, believe it or not, of competitive Quake. I had played through the campaigns of Quake 1, 2, and 4, but I had not played a single match of versus a human or a bot, so I decided to rectify this. I played several matches of Quake 3 Arena until I could face the Nightmare Bots on equal footing. So now I can at least give you my impressions of Quake as a first-person shooter in comparison to UT. Quake is a much simpler game overall. The weapons are simpler, for the most part you just aim at your opponent and you hit them, with the exception of the rocket launcher and the grenade launcher, then you actually have to think about what you're doing. The movement is much simpler, although it does help if you learn some of the more advanced techniques like the rocket jump and the strafe jump, you don't have anything in the way of dodging, or double jumping or anything like that. The game modes are additionally much simpler, you have deathmatch and several mutations thereof, team deathmatch and one on one deathmatch, and you have capture the flag. Nothing as complex as Onslaught, but they're both great games, and they're both answers to the question, what should a futuristic fast-paced shooter be? And you can't be wrong in that question, it's kind of like being wrong on the question, what do you want for dessert? A lot of people like vanilla ice cream, and I do too, but if I have a choice, I'm going to have me a tiramisu. And on that note, that's the end of this edition of Teach Me Unreal Tournament 2004. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, guys.